pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
putting us in better options for you then. And I'll touch on the water sewer rates for the next budget and further on that. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments from council? Um, I think there was a, um, a vehicle for the police as well. Yes, yep, that was in the budget. Yeah. I forgot to put the initial like the day before I got it off, but I remember that. Like, oh, yeah, well, that's the one in the phone, yeah, the police car. Mm -hmm. there. They don't give those away. No. <laughs> Cheaper than the <laughs> helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any further comments? First one is the delinquent bills and violations of the 2024 tax rule for the village ordinance 321 section 70-78D. And then perhaps we could do these together. Well, what's the date for the first one? The next, same. same. May 14th. So would that be the next regular meeting? Okay, okay, sorry. I'll just check, yeah, it's good to check. Um, and then the budget adoption to the taxation. Can those, I suppose, yeah. can both be done at the next regular meeting? Yeah, and they're both on May 14th. Okay. Um, is there a motion to schedule those public hearings? I make a motion to schedule a public hearing for the delivery bills and violations be put on the 2024 tax roll for the May 14th, 2024 regular council meeting. And the budget adoption. And to schedule the budget adoption to the taxation hearing for the May 14, 2024 regular council meeting. I knew you were going to say that, but I just wanted to help you. Motion made by Helen, seconded by Kemp. Any discussion? Okay, we'll move on to the Okay, we have a recommendation letter from Rove in there and a bit, comp, uh, bit comparisons below. Uh, on the bid tab, you'll see that it was um, about three, three and a quarter percent higher than the engineer's estimate. Uh, we, we did add a little more restoration to it regard, in regard to all the sewer work that we were going to do beforehand. We are going to try to restore it and have them tear it all back up. So some of that would be charged off the sewer account. Uh, but it was uh, made it easy because we had just done our due diligence and background and project um, verifications with Hutch Paving for our parking lot project, which are starting Monday. So the fact that they were low just made it really easy to then flow it through, check their numbers, and then come up with a plan to award it to them. So that's a recommendation to work with Hutch Paving in that amount. Thank you. Is that a not to exceed amount in the letter? I think you classify that, or that's it won't just be not to exceed. No, that's just the so that's, bit amount. Yeah, that's the bit amount. Because if they end up in more, right? You know, if we have not add few things to it, you know, it could. I would hope that it'd be a little less. Right. Okay. Is Hutch going to do the paving and the water main? They have no. It's um the excavator. Did you not dish talk or something like that? Uh, no, he, he wouldn't be on something like this. He can't do this. I'm too big. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't have the trucking and stuff like that. Um, boy, dish talk some rings a bell. I don't know if that's it. They're, uh, so they're really just approving the contract to the baby? Yes. Well, no, they're the general. They're, doing, they're, they're a subcontractor. Oh, okay. So, no, it's much baby. It's the contractor to do all the work. Oh, and they have that one subcontractor as part of their work. So, the water main replacement. They're, they're the putting it right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. They might be doing some of that stuff too. Yeah, some of the expedient is, I can't remember the name of it, I think it's Cox. Because there's some. But you're awarding the contract to Hutch Paving. Yeah, for that full amount. Hutch Paving has other people do the parts. Yeah. Right. Okay. The letter says Hutch plans to complete all asphalt and concrete work oh, themselves. Okay. To award the Park oh, Street. I'm sorry. Okay. We'll okay. move to award the Park Street Water Main and Paving Project to Hutch um, Paving Incorporated for the sum of $731,148.57 according to their bid. So 
board. Motion made by Cook, seconded by Helmuth. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Yes. Someone. Yes. Kemp. Yes. Orjo is absent and Cook. Yes. Okay. Next is the consideration of bids for the Park Street Sanitary Sewer Lateral Connection replacement. And I have the bid tabs on there, and I have the full bids here as well. So this is when we talk about briefing. We'll talk a little bit more about it, I think, at the budget meeting. We were a little, little startled at some of the, the, the laterals, which is part from the main over to the end of the public park where the building connection meets the private line, the gas line, private line going into the home. And probably about 19 or 20 of those we have some work. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're quite happy with the way with it. With Sarah Dan, DPW and Sons, and Cycle Services, DPW and Sons isn't really geared for this because he doesn't have the large trucking, you know, best thing to do is on set drill replace. He was going to have to for a lot more cost to haul away the spoils and bring the sand in. So they weren't really competitive about this. As well as they do, of course, on my water, my service leads, this would build up here. Come to find out how to do the house. But Sarah Dan, local company here, just east of town, um, we were, it, it came in about half what we were thinking. We, we were thinking, you know, based on the water line, service leads and stuff, and these are even deeper, and some of it's going to go underneath the road edge, and then perhaps even a couple of units down right to the main. We, we were estimating about four thousand dollars per location. So the fact that we're well below that, mm -hmm. uh, we were looking at like eighty, ninety, hundred thousand. But we were kind of estimating. So we were pretty happy with coming in at around forty-one. Uh, you know, we, we would recommend that we would award Sarah Dan Construction. This is going to be uh, overseen by Don Bradley and uh, Rudy. In our, they've done some of these themselves in the past, and they do one off here and there. So they're very familiar with that. Um, we have a uh, Third column for the bedding and the pipe and the materials and stuff as well. What's a donut connection? So, when the uh, play pipe comes, it has a hub on the end. Mm -hmm. And then they put, a, you know, when you connect that hub to a straight line pipe, you put it in there and there's a gap. So, the donut goes in, it's got, it's got uh, fins on both sides, slides into the donut, and it's got a centerpiece with fins on it, so then the cast iron pipe slides into there. It's made by the Pern Cohen Davis, and I used to work there years ago and made it myself. That's how they connect. And those are, uh, after 50 years, they will allow a lot of uh, infiltration of them. Yeah. So they have a newer one, a newer one connection, where they'll cut that hub off, so it's more of a straight pipe to straight pipe. Different sizes, mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. materials, but still they have a connection, and then that connection now has a steel band that goes over it, you know, can help it um, sturdy as well as mm -hmm. tighten down better to the rose out. So are we saying, so we have the sewer main in the row, mm -hmm. and then the lateral, to the property line. To the property line. To the right line. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying, in, I guess, Bob, in the Oxford Village ordinance, is that publicly owned? Because in most all the communities I've seen, those are private. They're private from the home all the way to the sewer. To the, not to, uh, to the right of way, where I've always dealt with them, because the right of way bank. We do have most other communities too. The pipe, like the water main, goes from the water main to the stop box is public, and then. This is the sewer is the whole way. But we've never, the sewer's always been the homeowners. Right? Yeah. I'm well, just, I, always I think you're right at the stop, from the stop box to the house. Yes. Right, for water. But for sewer, we've always, my office, just from my own experience, my office does anything from the house to the main is private, which we can pay for private, but I'm just wondering if our, if the village considers that private. Like, are we doing work on private property? In the village it's ordinance. underneath the road and it's underneath the right away, so I would that's okay. that it's in the private or it's in the public park. But that's how I've always dealt with them over the years. It's like, and like, we have a clog, we say, hey, if your clog is between the uh, the donut connection or the sidewalk in the house, that's up to you. If you call somebody out, you would do the repair. If it's from there out to the road, we will do the repair. So our office handles that, especially all the way to the main, all the way to the main especially for PA222. Like if there's a clog, there's tree roots right up to the main, but it's not coming in through the main, we, mm -hmm. we take care of it. We do not. So only So, so you take you take it private all the way from the house to the main. We do. Under, under in all the communities we operate. Even underneath the, the railways? Yep. That's what the village has always done in the past. That's mm -hmm. why I'm wondering what is it written in our code? We just need to acknowledge whether we're doing work on a private property here. Okay, we will check that. 
Yeah, it says the, the, the streets actually, it becomes village property. That's your, like in a typical country road, mm -hmm. you typically, you own the middle road, right? Your neighbor owns the middle road, you own the middle road, and then there's an overlay of a county road commission right away. Mm -hmm. And even though the person will own the middle road, we've always taken the position that the right away line is the public domain, and that's where it kind of like water box stop. That's why we do the water box curb stop there too. Because when the curb stop in, that's technically village property. Mm -hmm. we, we, better, we, we better take a look at that. I Laura, you're saying that it's always been, I agree, agreeing with what I'm saying. I'm agreeing with Kelsey. Okay. Yeah, she's agreeing with what you're saying. Okay, that's yeah. why I'm just curious. Because I just, it's fine, but I don't want to, like, so for example, all the trees that are in the right-of-way, those aren't responsibility of the homeowner either because no, they're in the right-of-way? The trees in the right of way and it's upsetting the sidewalk or causing problems from the sidewalk, we are responsible for that tree. Okay. We take that tree down at our cost. Okay. And any damage caused by that tree. Okay. If it, that's why we suggest people we put one back in, put it behind the sidewalk. Right. That way yeah. it's your tree, we're out of it at that point. If yeah. it starts heaving the sidewalk, if, if we go out and look at it's heaving the sidewalk and it's on the back side, it gets the right of way and starts in the back. Do we need to yeah. act on this? We are, uh, there's some time constraints because we want to get this work done by uh, the, the road project is not supposed to start like 4th of July. So we so get we're approved giving a, we were hoping to get that May and June mm -hmm. as a window to do it. So we get approve this, but subject to us checking. Or we could put it on our budget meeting agenda. Or you could do that, right? Yeah, I would want to go to the next month because they have to schedule, they have to know. I feel comfortable, out. more comfortable if we look. Just whatever the, yeah, I just don't want us to be yeah, just because I want to know. And I tried articulating this before, Joe. I'm sorry. I'm just well, bringing I it up again now. <laughs> I, I've always dealt with, like, out in the front, the right way line is where the public lateral begins. There's a lateral and then there's a lead. Right. Let's, let's take a look at what our. Yeah. And Don's always done it. We've always dealt with that slab in here. In the village, too, he said, yes, if it's from the sidewalk in the house, that's the homeowner's responsibility. Mm -hmm. I know I don't have a sidewalk, but I repaired my sewer mm -hmm. and I've paid for it, not for the yeah. But yeah, because it's it's somehow it's hard to tell with you know unless we get your camera down in there, you don't know what it's exactly where it is. Sometimes they'll come out from the camera and they have a meter, they can measure out how far away they out from the clean out from the basement, and they can come out, it's along twenty feet out, you can measure and say, Well that, that clog is right here, and that's four feet from the sidewalk, that's on yours. A lot of times they do they blow it down from the main and which at the main. Yeah. But repairs we've always done from the sidewalk into the street. <laughs> it's under our road. And we would take that. If we, if we table this to the budget meeting, we'll be okay. That's two weeks, or what is that? Two weeks from yesterday or three weeks from yesterday? Three weeks from yesterday. You might just want to call them. He, he and I talked about this. We're all on the same page. Yeah, I thought we were good on this, but I, now that you are raising it, I want to make sure. I've just never seen it. I've never seen it done yet. Okay, yeah. And I just but, I don't yeah. want to open up the door to, you know, now we're getting a call well, every time. We're on yes. private property. What you, yeah. Right. Be because if you pull up the properties, uh, you you don't own in the middle road. Though. When the railway line comes, yeah. you own to the sidewalk. You know, or you, you can take to, to the edge of the road. Subject to us confirming. Yeah. You own the left edge of the road. Subject to an ordinance analysis. Right. Yeah. I just want to make sure because I've seen most like sewer use ordinances will say they'll yes. define the water yeah. is on by this. The sewer is on. Yeah. So that's what I was just curious as far as why don't, why don't we take action on it? Okay. If we're right, we're right. If we're wrong, then we'll bring it back to the budget. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's the other side of that coin. The work has to be done. You have to do the sewers? Some of them are really, really clogged up. Yeah. And it's in that section from that donut connection where the right away line is out. To the I mean, point. yeah, it makes most sense. You're so already going to be digging we don't there. Wanna be, we don't want to come back and have to dig out and repair this thing you know, a year after this new road goes in and new sidewalks are in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100%. And I'm not opposed yeah. to someone getting great service from the village, <laughs> even though not everybody has, but at least with this broadcast. Yeah, we should be careful forward. about that precedent. Yeah. Right, that's my that's part so of We can take action on this, and then if Joe and I determine that we're, yeah. we need to relook at it, we'll bring it to the budget, mm -hmm. bring it back. And when you mentioned about you want to make sure we're doing private property, my, my belief was that, yes, we, we, own, we own that line over to the hub. So that was where I thought, no, we're not going to try it. We're, we're, we're starting here and going backwards to laterals. Yeah. I've always seen them take that part. Man. But again, I didn't go back and review your ordinance, but that specifically, I didn't catch yeah. what you were saying about your belief that the private was all the way to the main. I've never. And the 
it could be this yeah. hub thing, you know, that's why I'm like, I had a general idea of what it is, but maybe the well, infrastructure so looks different and you can tell where the separation the is. The sewer main and the lateral are going to stall that village, mm -hmm. right? The mains, they're all material, they're all clay, the hub's coming over, the lateral, they're all clay, when they end, it's like, okay, Mr. Moore, you come over, you tie up our lateral. Mm -hmm. So even now today, you would put in, Yes. You would, if there's already sewer around in front of someone's house, but they haven't hooked up to it, you'd come out and dig up part of it to put in but usually the leaves are already there. You can take a group like in my house. In my house, there's a sewer line out front, but I wasn't tied in with the 2004 when we bought it. There was a stub already put in. Oh, interesting. To the right away line. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just the point of demark for yeah. where you want to begin and where you want to end. Where yeah. that is. Our, our, our ordinance should be semi clear. Yeah. Hopefully, it's semi Yeah, so good again, our adult plan will you know, show the leaves and we yeah. yeah, my only concern is just, yeah, obviously for the Empire property and <coughs> liability purposes. So now all of a sudden we're going to claim we're responsible for this and there's crap clogged in there and it backs up someone's basement, then the village is now responsible for all of this before, whereas before we could say, nope, it was on the lateral, it was your tree roots, it was yeah. your right. it is so funny. flushable wipes. Because Don was my office today, <laughs> we're talking all stuff, he's like, you know, well, then I'm, I'm leaving tomorrow for a week. He said, oh, I'll see you get back. I said, yeah, I don't see anything on the agenda. You need to be there tonight. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I literally could call him. He could be in ten minutes. He could take this up in ten minutes. But okay. I mean, because he would know the, how it's always been dealt with. I think he was just call, and he now would like to come in. Why don't we take action on it as if we're right and bring it back? <laughs> I'm fine with that. I'll give it a go. <laughs> this is gonna be great. I can't read any of these numbers. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion to award the contract. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's that part of that. <laughs> to Saradin Construction. Is it I say it right? Yep, Saradin. In the amount of 40, in an amount not to exceed $41,000. For the replacement of the sewer lateral, from the donut connection to the road edge, assuming the village is correct as to the responsibility of the sewer lateral to the donut connection, as presented. <laughs> Set with confidence. Motion made by Helmut, for as well as done. And seconded by Sia. Any discussion? Um, I guess with the uh, the bids coming in under, is that going to allow us to do any extra anywhere? Um, no, we're, we're, we're pretty much sticking to the window of a Park Street paving watering project. And that, that's really what, we're, really what we're driving is. We don't want to come back a year later and tear apart the road. Um, we want to make sure these are all clean. So, and again, uh, we were pretty pleased because you know, we were thinking, oh, this would be like 100 grand. Like, Ooh, 41. Yeah. Okay. Um, and they can fit literally their half mile from town to their office. They work with them, those guys a lot. Good contractors, um, good price. We're going to be able to hit our window. Mm -hmm. okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Alba? Yes. Nicosia? Yes. Cap? Yeah. Cook? Yes. The board show was yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Next, more fun water stuff. Water and sewer rates. Yeah, so I was down at Kelsey's office last <laughs> week. And not her, but some of her counterparts explained to us uh, the system, the county wide system, operations and maintenance, uh, improvements, things like that. And millions and millions of dollars because it's a huge system. And uh, we were looking at a a good estimate would be like six and a quarter percent increase on sewer rates alone over the next five each year for the next five years. As well. That's for more of the ongoing stuff. And then there's some an actual another bond we should be expecting sometime in June for an option to prepay. Don't know the amount from the very call like a fourteen million dollar bond and rough number that I was thinking ours might be around 161, 163,000 if we wanted to prepay it. We'll have to look and see what that looks like, see what the interest rate is, see what the interest savings are. See if we want to do that. But 
whether we prepay that or not. We've already prepaid two, I think, in the last three years uh, from the county, and so we will down our sewer fund a little bit. We were already going to think, well, we should probably start building that up a little bit. We're spending forty thousand here in a couple years. We do another road project. We might spend, you know, another twenty thousand or something on sewer repairs, perhaps. And then this, you know, at least six and a quarter percent increase from the county for those costs coming at us regardless. So we're going to have to look at raising the sewer rates. We haven't raised them in my six and a half years here. We've been done pretty good with interest earnings the last year or so. That's how it um, we probably made 40000 in the last year or more, more than that, probably. And so, at our next budget workshop, I'll bring some options. You know, we have the, the, the flat fee, the regular sewer fee, sometimes called, and then you have your usage fee. Um, and then there's different rates based on the sewer or the water meter into the home. So, if you have a residential home, one inch meter is costing like 18 cents a month or something just to have the water service in. I think I don't know the county rate is like 39 or 41. Are you talking water or sewer? Sewer, but it's based on the water meter size. That's what the rate. They have different tiered rates based on your water meter size. Mm -hmm. So we can look at changing the flat rate amount so everybody then has a modest increase. Um, that way you know it's just better for the months too. Same thing though for our, I was going to have the same conversation on, uh, about our water rates. We, you know, we were spending, that's going to be a four hundred and some thousand dollars or about five hundred thousand dollars on Park Street for water work and fixing the road over top of the water. Um, we paid out a couple bonds in the last three years. I think I sent a bond to or a email separately to you guys about the bonds. And we still have one more that's good for about July of 2028, it's about four years out. Another good size one, $128,000 that will fall off. But we should probably bump up the water rate a little bit too to keep ahead of the game. Next couple of years, like 2026, by at least we have to have our water tower painted on the in, and, and cleaned on the inside. Um, have at least checked and probably painted on the outside. So we would have to look at maybe some water rate decreases as well for those things. If it wasn't for all the lead and copper rules stuff that we were being forced to do, we wouldn't be looking at it. As the bonds come out, those free enough money, but we're now spending it in large chunks. And we're going to continue to do this like every other year for the next. 10, 12 years as well. And then eventually, you know, maybe we'll ease off on those as that work gets complete. The EPA's new rules, you have to have it done in 10 years. Is that right? So, yeah, yeah I mean, there's. How many communities do you think, like, large communities in the country are going to have that done? Not a lot. No, I think it's impossible. <laughs> right. I don't know if contractors are paid for. It's like emissions money. standards, Joe. It's just a goal. Yes. So we're, we're doing fairly good on our service leads, and we're working on those out a lot. What I mean, the good. county communities are doing pretty well, actually, I mean, in terms of fighting off chunks per year. Um, you guys are doing pretty well mm -hmm. overall. Mm -hmm. But in, ter in terms of 10-year compliance, it's going to be very tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there'll be many that don't keep that by far. And it'll get expensive. But as far as increases to the water and sewer rates, like I've definitely noticed that we haven't had any, and most communities have them every year, and those who don't are in trouble right now. We're not one of those. Because right. we had to the dual pleasure, the pleasure of those bonds falling off. They yeah. had like two hundred some thousand dollars a year, but together. Yeah. So, um, so that's pretty much just afraid to raise the rates. Yeah. And they're paying the penalty. Yeah. 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 So before we get further down the road, we were already thinking about, I mean, Don talked last year, this year about, you know, bumping up like five bucks, ten bucks, whatever <coughs> here and there, so that money starts to get put back into the fund a little bit. I'd rather do something small now, mm -hmm. and yeah. then to do something huge later. Yep. Yeah, that's so important. We've had a couple instances where the communities, yeah, were hesitant to raise yeah. rates, and then all of a sudden you got hit up hard, and the community members are calling our office like, why didn't you just increase that, like, a percentage? Every year, why don't you cut us with like ten percent at once? You know, so it definitely makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. It's received way better, so I agree. Agree. The more we can do, um, yeah. little by little. I think because we had a pretty, pretty decent fund balance, and those mm -hmm. bonds are coming off. It's kind of about we don't need to get, but it's probably done. Yeah. Okay. So this will be further discussed at the budget workshop. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Any questions or feedback from council at this point? All right, we'll move on to item 10. There are no items removed from the consent agenda, so we'll go to our second instance of public comment. Does anyone who like to speak? Seeing no one. Move. We'll go to committee report. Was that bad loud? <laughs> Not the last one. I went before when she went before. Oh, okay. Um, Planning Commission and Cable Commission. No? The Cable Commission is not that. You weren't at Planning Commission. We don't know where you were. We approved a sign. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, we approved a sign. Was I in the hospital? I don't think so. This when was, was it? Two weeks ago. Did you play cookies? Those five of us there. We were fine. <laughs> they were the actual person for a The fact that I wasn't in the hospital, I might have played up the yeah. <laughs> uh, we have, uh, a sign was approved at 53 South uh, for a new um, it's a yoga place, yoga place. Oh, stretching place. Yeah, you know where fuel is right now? I think it's on the south yeah. side of that. Great. It's at the north side of that. Okay. I don't know. North what are those side. three units? North south side? side? North. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Uh, physical therapy stretching. Yes, they have. There you go. Thanks. There you go. Yoga wasn't really needed. <laughs> I mean, that sounds great, too. Yoga studio. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, that was a thank you. Thank you. Um, DDA, I'd love to defer to our executive yeah. director. Thank you. Sure. Bring my magnets up here. Allison, I'll give you one, too. So, um, yeah, so really busy with our budgeting. So, you'll have our budget. Um, we'll just give it to you for your next workshop. Uh, the work committee approved it today and made the recommendation, so we'll probably approve it at our board meeting on Monday, but it's ready to go. Um, not a huge change from last year, a lot of things the same. We're just putting additional money into capital improvements to match some ARPA funding from the county, which is really nice. Um, we are, have our entire summer series set from cornhole to concerts to line dancing. Um, Wine Wednesdays and everything in between. So, um, magnets are available at the village office. You guys have one today, Allison. I'll give that one to you. But it's um, we got some really great sponsors and people who came alongside us this year, so we we're able to do a little bit extra. Um, we're doing a lot to prepare for the national conference in May for Main Street, and we'll be presenting at the conference in Alabama. And then, gosh. Not much else. I mean, it's, it's busy. It's crazy, but it's it's good. But I think you guys are pretty much aware of everything else that's going on. Kelsey, did I miss anything from around this meeting? I don't think so. Oh, we are going to interview. Um, we received quite a few applications for the board member position. So, um, or committee to get down to three today, and they're going to bring those people in for some interviews next week. So, okay. I'd like to see all of them. Absolutely. I was actually going to put them in your board packet for Monday so that okay, you guys sure. could see everything and then they have the three that they thought would be the best. Great. Thank yeah. you so much. For sure. All right. Colleen Yeah, with a few weeks ago and um, one thing that's been, it's, it's already started, it's just not completed. If you've been over by the white pine coffee roasters in that big wizard, um, there is a large rock built place over there and that was uh, an effort by Jacob Schilling's mom. Justin Schilling. Justin Schilling. I'm sorry. Justin Schilling's yeah. mom. Um, there's also a plaque that's going to be more placed on that. And um, his dad has also been doing a fundraiser probably in our office, so some food he's gathering. So um, that was done uh, a while back, the lock's been placed there. And she's been busy doing other things, of course. And uh, hopefully the, the plaque will be done. Probably the next month. Uh, other than that, Liz is busy. She was moving her stuff out uh, even more so today um, in preparation of that. And then we get to that, she's found another uh, location to get us to the uh, parking lot project. But no, they're doing well. They're still getting some more and stuff. They have a very good time. They do in the past wasn't uh, available like that. So moving along, that's good though. Do you know when that crosswalk at uh, Frosty Boys is going to be repainted? 
Did you paint it? Yes. Well, they're not in service right now, so I don't know if they're going to paint them because the um, they got. Is it still a crosswalk? Though? It's a crosswalk, but the light, the warning lights were became um, defunct. Basically, they, you couldn't be parked with them anymore. Mm -hmm. They were working intermittently, which we the flying trail thought was not good um, because sometimes you use it and it would work, and sometimes it wouldn't. Road Commission installed it, um, even though one side is in the village property, they cross the road and end up on road commission property. The road commission took the lead when they were installed and it just got to where they were obsolete. You couldn't be parked for them anymore. And those things are you know, very expensive. Mm -hmm. We've had a couple of folks come and, and offer to do fundraisers at the Glen Trail. Um, Oxford Township has talked about it. They have a little committee about using some of their uh, the ARPA funds, maybe for that as well. But nothing short term. So I doubt they're going to maintain it as far as painting of it. Um, you might be talking about the straight I'm, I'm talking about the straight okay, well, <laughs> yeah. 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 no, I'm sorry. <laughs> so that part, I don't know what that brand is. We all speak in English. I don't think we are. Are you talking about the ice cream? Well, it's yeah. 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 yeah, yes, the same, same crosswalk, crosswalk but but released what, on the end. Uh, the hot topic of a lady is the lights. Yes, yeah. I was talking about paint. <laughs> yes, white paint right there. Yes, yes. So um, I'll have to see what Don did those and that. I, know, I think we did that last when we did 2019 when we paved West Burdick and went down the years ago. I think we freshened it then. Could we refresh it now? Yes. There's, there's several of them around, like the stop lines yeah. around town, too, that they'll try to get at. Oh, I know he might be another goal. I think that's a more, it's a closer goal than the Because I'm not sure yeah. if the crosswalk <laughs> that got painted it, you know, here because of the time of the year. It was getting late in the year. Right. And those need to be scheduled for that as well. Mm -hmm. um, our, our staff will put down that paint. Is that what they were working on at the intersectional plaza? No. The, um, um, when they, installed, no, when they installed that, there was a manhole there, um, not to collect water, just to cover. And it kind of was part of the old curve, but when they put the new one in, they kind of went around it. So that made it the greatest worse, made it sharper radius there. So now trucks go over all the time versus sometime. And so we're pouring cement into it. Um, so as you go over, there won't just be driving over gravel. Or trying to put grass there just would be fruit, fruitless. So yeah, they were pouring some of that tomorrow morning. They're going to do it two fours because the one is kind of formed around the bottom of the... It looks like a big hole. I mean, it, they backed it out, put some gravel into it, and there's a little a board there formed up. So they pour the bottom half down to the drain first. The drain cover, it's not a drain, but the manhole cover. And they're also going to be pouring the cement for the repair on the catch basin in the parking lot across the way here. That's <coughs> it's been in for a while. They did the repairs in the catch basin and, and re it and everything, but and they've got a soft cut and they had to wait for the weather to be nice in order to pour the concrete. So we we'll pour the concrete on that, run that catch basin here again, Funky Monkey, as well as that both tomorrow. Great. 8 a.m. Is there something for the CBA that we know that we don't know? Okay. No. Okay. No. Um, That's good. Oh, G manager, want to answer anything else, Joe? Um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm going on vacation tomorrow. I'll be back next Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got an email uh, last week or so. MDOT has a Category B funding. It's a competitive grant. It, it, it's not a lot of money. It's very competitive. It's hard to get. We're going to apply. It has to do with local streets. And only in, we're in the category of the cities and villages of less than 10,000 population. I think there was only like 14 to 18 grants last year. 14, I think, initially. Then they came with some other money and brought some additional ones out. But it's tough. It could be some more. But in the first round of all the ones, there wasn't even one given no count. They tried to spread it around geographically as well, so that might bode well for us this year. Um, and if you do it in, in regard, in relation to an additional project, you get better points. So if we were to look at this and say, hey, we want to do a street next year uh, with a water main, that would help our schooling of it. There's no, we don't see the scoring. They just say, these are the things that help your score, and if you already received it, then that lets them your score if you already received one. And this will be for construction season of 2025. So it's a June 12th deadline. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be bringing something back to May. It was like, we, we have to do some cost estimates and preliminary work to get that one pretty good. So I might have to spend a little bit of money to get some battle estimates. Mm -hmm. um, we would have to then maybe decide, okay. We wouldn't necessarily have to decide which street per se, but we'd say, all right, for instance, Denison Street or Davison Street or something, uh, the maximum is 250,000 that, that they would match. It doesn't include any of their engineering or Preliminary work that's the construction work itself. Mm -hmm. But that means you're looking at about a five hundred thousand dollar project, which is about what park feet is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that'd be helpful if we are lucky enough to get it. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, 
oh, we had to post for our DPW project or uh, our personnel. Um, we had a gentleman on last year. We thought it was going to still be available and come back and interview uh, a couple times to try and connect. It was connect, so it wasn't a good sign. So um, I think I posted it last Thursday. And on our website and on our social media, and then I'll get something to share with the leader as well. Great. Yeah, two things, which I really have, but I just want, um, so next week in the, in the Michigan Supreme Court, there's going to be uh, oral arguments concerning the contract rezoning and the, and the wording of the statute and uh, what the statute allows and what the statute doesn't allow. I will be arguing that case uh, next week. And then in the early part of May, the Supreme Court will hear oral arguments whether <clears throat> legislative bodies who form committees and without decision-making authority, whether those committees have to comply with the Open Meetings Act, and I'll be arguing that case in the first May. What's your position? That's the which side? Because <laughs> so, I've always been, I've always, well, so, I won't say my position yet. So, <laughs> so I can tell you on, uh, I, I am I'm of the opinion that um, the law is clear that if, 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 you, if you don't have decision So, so let's just so that's say, no, let's just say a perfect example is, is you guys are very busy with you know village business and, and we, we have a vacant parking and, and the chair said the president says, you know, what should we do with that parking? And you say, Well we should make it into a playground and then, and then all of a sudden you want to do a little study of what should happen in the park. So you form a park committee and the park committee just goes out and studies ideas for the park and brings back recommendations. But yes. number one. No, less than four, and never makes. That's where we go. And never makes a decision, right? They just bring back a record. Do they have to post and be minutes and do all the things that only requires to have an agenda? Mm -hmm. I would say it should, because I think the government needs to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but the question before the Supreme Court is, what does the law say? And the law really says that you know, if you're performing a legislative function, then you're subject. You're a public body, subject. On the contract rezoning, the question is a little more in, 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 involved, but it, 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 it basically centers on if somebody comes to you and wants to contract rezone for a use in a certain zoning category, does the use have to pre exist in that category? Or, yeah, conditional. Yeah. Or can they contract into it in the Supreme Court? Um, I lost that matter at the trial court. I lost it. Court of Appeals and then the Supreme Court said we want to hear it. So you know what that means. That means you're gonna lose again. I'm gonna win again. <laughs> no. Well they won't they won't take it if you're gonna lose again, right? Normally. <laughs> but we'll see. So um, on that on that one the real property section of the guy and the Michigan Township Association submitted an amicus brief. The, the uh, MML submitted an amicus brief. Yeah, all against this, but you know <laughs> It should be interesting. Um, this all has to do with uh, with the situation up in Mayfield uh, kind of uh, uh, Township. So, um, anyways, two interesting things that could affect us. We yeah, think. I think very relevant, and I'm actually happy to get some. I would like the decisions, you know, to have the clarity. On yeah, this yeah, and I'll, and I'll get back to you guys at the main meeting uh, because both of those oral arguments will have been. We won't have decisions, of course. Mm -hmm. It's always interesting to argue on the Michigan Supreme Court because it's uh, rare to be able to do it. Yeah. Obviously, but that would be interesting. I, I have an, uh, a attorney general opinion very clear, I thought, on that one, eh, that states that if you have no decision making authority, it's not a committee. Mm -hmm. You are. Uh, I, I kind of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, it's one of those, it's, it's, it, it can be, I just believe in. All meetings should be open to the public. Mm -hmm. They should know about it. So you, nobody can 
say I didn't know about that. And um, one of the other things about while I'm talking is that I want to uh, remind you of that and remind you of uh, boards up. When you when you do your uh, what's coming up now, um, council comments, right? Um, there's been some some discussions that <coughs> you know um, you raise something at council comment that you think is important, and then all of a sudden there's a discussion on <coughs> among the council whether or not that should have just been on the agenda mm -hmm. because the people at home didn't know that was going to come up. Yeah, that's great. So we're starting to get some some uh, blowback on these council privileges and commission mm -hmm. privilege times where people raise an entirely new topic and then there's a, a quorum mm -hmm. and then there's discussion on the topic <coughs> and the public is saying, hey, I'm at home. If I had known you were going to talk about the work being done on this history, I would have come to the meeting because I got something to say. So we have to be careful. I'm just giving you a heads up on your comments, not to dive too far into a topic and debate it as a forum without it being on your agenda. Yeah. Thank you. Very interesting. All right. Let's go for some council comments. <coughs> not with that. Said, I, have nothing, I have nothing. I have nothing. I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Are Girl Scout cookies okay? <laughs> um, I'm looking for mine, so yes. Right. Get out there and support your uh, local Girl Scouts and then go out and buy <coughs> cookies. I, I think uh, we, uh, they do a lot of good in the, in the, uh, in the community and, and we just need to make sure that we're supporting them. So I have two of them at home. And, uh, do you have any in your trunk? <laughs> I may have some somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can bring you some next week. I would like to say this is the first year in my life I did not eat the Girl Scout cookie. We, we have to fix that. Yeah, so that you're not eating the Girl Scout cookie. You can't live with them.